Thank you everyone for joining us here, of course mostly online or virtually. I would like to acknowledge and thank the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, the Lekwungen speaking peoples, for having us here on their traditional territories. I'm Spencer Chandra Herbert, the MLA for Vancouver West End, a Premier's Advisor on Rental Housing. I want to thank everybody. Obviously, it's been a long couple of weeks, a challenging couple of weeks. Uh, the patience, the compassion, the care you're showing for your community, for each other, for everyone, is really noted and appreciated. It's a challenging time, no question. And one of the challenges people have been raising with me and with all of us, more, more so than most issues, has been housing and fear of losing their housing because of COVID-19. We've been clear that no one will lose their housing because of COVID-19. Today's announcement will meet that commitment. We believe we need to do more than meet that commitment. We also believe we need to provide relief for renters, for rental housing providers. The stress is off the charts right now. We need to give people security and safety in their rental housing. Early last week, the Premier asked me to lead a rapid-fire consultation, as comprehensive as I could do it, as quickly as I could do it, because the need is so great on what we needed to do to support renters and rental housing providers now in the time of this public health emergency. I want to thank everyone, renters, rental housing providers, your associations, everyone who's emailed me, who's contacted, phoned me. We had great conversations with so many, and I want to thank the advocates who are doing so much to protect renters and rental housing providers at this time. The need is great. Your work is really appreciated by the community today. The measures we announced today, in addition to the federal announcement and our earlier announcement on Monday of support, will help people stay safe in their homes, protected, knowing that there can be a better future. It's rough night right now, but it will get better. And I want to thank you for doing everything you can to look out for your community. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our Premier, Premier John Horgan, to help share what we are announcing today. Thank you, Mr. Premier. <clears throat> Great, Spencer. Thank you very much uh, for that, and, and thank you for the work that you did in, in very short order. Uh, Spencer, of course, uh, chaired a uh, rental task force uh, last year, uh, did some good work that allowed us to put in place policies and programs to protect renters before the advent of COVID-19. So I was grateful that Spencer was able to reactivate his contact list and connect with people to get a direct uh, uh, sounding from them, whether they be providers of rental housing or renters themselves. And I think we've taken that information and working with uh, Minister Robinson, put together a fairly comprehensive package, adding on to the work that we've already done with our COVID-19 action plan announced earlier this week. I think it was on Monday. I too want to acknowledge the traditional territory of the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations and, and again uh, reiterate that uh, the challenges we have when it comes to addressing the pandemic, the challenges we have about keeping people safe, about making sure that we can continue to have economic activity and most importantly that people don't feel the most critical place for them now, as Dr. Henry has said, stay home. We don't want people to think they may lose that home as a result of this pandemic. And I've had just this week uh, 17,000 emails across British Columbia and that speaks to the, the anxiety and the stress that people are feeling about these issues and it was important for us to get, uh, get the mix right and to ensure that it fit into a more comprehensive plan working with the federal government and our municipal partners to ensure that we were doing everything we could to keep people safe doing everything we could to make sure that if they were sick or self-isolating, they'd had their hours cut back or that they were laid off, that they would not be fearful of losing their home. And so I want to also say to landlords, to those who are providing rental housing, that we want to make sure we continue to work with you because those rent checks are critical to your families as well, critical to you making your payments also. But home should be a place of comfort and security, and we've worked uh, tirelessly, Minister Robinson and Spencer, Chandra Herbert, to make sure that we get that balance right. So this morning, Cabinet met and approved a, a package, and I'll outline some of those elements today, but it's designed to give immediate protection to renters and to landlords. First, we'll be providing a $500 a month 
uh, package to help renters up to $500 a month to make sure that they can continue to stay in place and that landlords can continue to see some revenue coming in. That will be delivered through BC Housing. Selena will go into some of the details, but we use BC Housing because it's the best way to deliver this program. They're already working on other programs like SAFER, like the uh, res uh, renters uh, uh, program that we already have in place. This supplemental renters uh, uh, rebate will be there to help people. This supplemental check will be there to help people get through the coming months. And we want to make sure that, uh, it, it, that we do this in a way that makes the most impact for the greatest number of people. I want to reiterate, if you can pay your rent, you should pay your rent. Th this fund is there to help those people who are in genuine distress. The fewer people who access the program, the more opportunity we have to expand it going forward. The other issue, of course, that's of primary concern to people is the prospect of an eviction during this stressful time. And I'm here to say that while uh, the emergency order is in place here in British Columbia, BC is suspending current and future evictions until this crisis has passed. There will be some exceptions, of course, but by and large, if you are at home, you're a good landlord, you're a good tenant, you will be able to continue that relationship well into the future. That's the commitment we've made as a government. That's what we are announcing here today. $500 uh, a month for the next four months, available for rent, uh, a, a, a moratorium on, uh, on evictions, and a rent freeze is the third portion that I want to talk about. This is not the time to seek rent increases, and, and there is just zero chance of that happening. I think uh, those who provide rental stock understand that, and I want those that are, are concerned about how they're going to make it to, uh, through April, through May, and through June, I want them to be absolutely, absolutely certain that the government is here to help you. We have programs in place. It's not just the, the renter's piece we're providing today, but we're topping up the federal uh, resources when it comes to those who are going to be going on to income assistance through... Uh, Employment insurance, $1,000 from the province, $2,000 announced today by the federal government. We're waiving uh, the uh, payment of student loans until September. So again, those who are looking at where are we going to find enough money to keep going, we're going to add a whole host of modest programs to make the whole package work for everybody. And lastly, before I turn the, the microphone over to uh, uh, Minister Robinson for uh, some in, in more detailed uh, assessment of the package that we put forward, because there are a couple of other elements, I want to just say a word about uh, those who are concerned about their mortgages. I've been hearing, uh, regrettably, I've been hearing that some banks and some financial institutions are not as enthusiastic about uh, living up to the challenge that we have in front of us. And so I, I'm calling on banks and financial institutions to work with mortgage holders to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to get through this difficult time. All of us working together is the only way forward. We've seen extraordinary cooperation in British Columbia over the past number of weeks. We need to redouble those efforts going forward. We need to make sure that we're doing our part by listening to Dr. Henry uh, and ensuring that we are self-isolating if we're not feeling well. We're exercising distances that are appropriate at this difficult time. And also, again, most importantly, continue to keep your hands clean. Continue to work with your neighbors to make sure that they've got everything that they need. Working together, we're going to get through this. No one's going to lose their home. We're going to put some resources into the pockets of people so we can keep the economy going. I think we're on the right track. I know with everyone's support working together, we'll get through this. And with that, I'm going to invite Minister Robinson to step up and uh, fill in some of the details on the program that we announced today at Cabinet. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Premier, and I, too, would like to acknowledge that we're on the territory of the Lekwungen-speaking people. Well, we all know that uh, the next few months are going to be difficult. That's um, been clear uh, for some time. Uh, and we need to remember to keep doing everything that we can, everything that we can, to support each other. Because, frankly, that's the only way that we are going to get through this. And it's why we have been working hard to develop supports for people, people who are suffering job loss, and other difficulties as a result of COVID-19. And it's important to remember really what this is about. It's about the people that we love. It's about our families. It's about our neighbors. It's about our friends. It's about our colleagues. It is about our communities. And this is an unprecedented challenge. And it will require every single one of us doing our part. It will require all of us to come together as a society to protect each other. 
So uh, this past weekend, I talked about some first steps that we are taking to help people who don't have homes right now. And on that front, there is much more to do and there's more to come. And as we do this work, it is critical to make sure that people in British Columbia are not made homeless because of COVID-19. At a time when we are asking people to stay home to prevent the spread of this virus, we have to make sure that people can keep their homes. The Premier mentioned measures to protect people's health, such as new powers for landlords to restrict. Um, uh, one of the things that we're, we're doing with these new powers is to restrict the use of common areas and to stop visitors coming to the building. So landlords will be able to do that to help keep everyone safe. We've all heard Dr. Henry and Minister Dix outline what, it, what it's going to take to slow down this virus so that our health care system can keep up. So we have to keep distance from each other to keep the virus from spreading. That means that we shouldn't have visitors over. We have to minimize the number of people touching shared surfaces and running into each other. So this new rule will let landlords restrict access to common areas. For example, restricting how many people can be in a shared laundry room at once or close down shared spaces like uh, game rooms or other social spaces that might exist in a multi-purpose building. This is to protect the health and safety of everyone in these buildings and beyond. On that same note, we are also restricting the right of landlords to enter people's homes unless, unless there is a clear threat to people or to property. Tenants have to be able to protect themselves and others from the virus. Keeping people out of their homes is part of make, maintaining the distance that we all need so that we can all be safe from COVID-19. We are also halting the enforcement of existing eviction notices issued by the Residential Tenancy Branch, except in extreme cases where there are safety concerns. And there are a small number of court-ordered evictions that are up to the courts, which operate independently of government. I do understand that the courts are aware of, these, of this issue, and I will allow the courts to speak for themselves. We are pairing all of these actions to stop evictions with rental supports that will support landlords so that they too can stay afloat and meet their needs and the needs of their families. The new rental assistance program will be available to low and moderate income individuals who have experienced a significant reduction in their income because of COVID-19. And we're gonna ask that tenants and landlords that you talk to each other about how to pay rent um, uh, in a, as you would in a normal course of um, your, your exchange and in your relationship, if you can. The supplement that we're proposing with this new program is to help address any shortfall. Because many landlords, especially families with secondary suites, they too depend on rental income to pay their bills. And through all of this, we are making changes so that people can continue to access the services that they count on at the residential tenancy branch. As a government, we are here for tenants and we are here for landlords. We know this is a scary time and it is made harder because we can only offer comfort from a distance. But we are going to get through this. We have to talk to each other, we have to support each other, and we have to recognize how hard it is on all of us. But the more compassion, the more kindness that we can show each other as we go through this together, the stronger we'll be when we get to the other side. Thank you.